My name is Kevin Wallace, and in this video, you're going to see three types of mistakes that Cisco certification candidates make when they take an exam, even the experienced ones. First, there's the techie stuff like subnet mass calculations, figuring out how OSPF works with the Dijkstra algorithm, and of course there's Radio Perlman's spanning tree protocol, we've got rapid spanning tree, multi-instant spanning tree, per VLAN spanning tree, and then there's the strategy stuff. Let's say you're in the exam and you're stuck on a question. How long do you spend on that one question before moving on? And how do you study for your exam in the first place? And finally, there's the mental stuff like getting nervous on the exam and forgetting what you studied. Before we shine a light on these three big mistakes that so many people make in their CCNA exam, you might be wondering, who is this guy? Why should I listen to him? So here's my bio, and I promise, 30 seconds or less. I've got a couple of CCAs, one in route switch and one in voice. I work full time for a Cisco learning partner where I teach Cisco courses live and online, written a bunch of books for Cisco Press, and as far as real world experience, I was a network manager at a university and one of five network designers at Walt Disney World in Florida. The first big mistake people make is when it comes to the techie stuff. Let's take, for example, the CCNA exam. Somebody wants to go take that exam and be successful. One of the mistakes so many people make is they try to find out exactly what's on the exam. Well, will they ask me about this specific technology or that specific technology? Or we talk to our friends, our coworkers. My friend said there were simulations, there were drag and drop questions, there were monsters on the exam. You see, the challenge with talking to others and trying to come up with exactly what's on the exam is that that there are so many things that could be on the exam. Here's what the CCNA blueprint really contains. There's a ton of questions you could be asked about LAN switching technologies. There's IP routing technologies. We've also got network device security questions that we could have, troubleshooting. What about WAN technologies? IP services? IP addressing for both IP version 4 and IP version 6, as well as the operation of IP data networks. And let's say that you somehow did come up with an exact list of what's on the exam. You know what Cisco does? Cisco makes silent updates to their exam. They can make changes, so even if you do know what was on the exam a month ago, you might not know what's on it tomorrow. So what is the solution? My suggestion is that we get incredibly curious about the topics on a particular exam, like the CCNA exam. Let's ask questions such as, how does it work? Why does it work this way? How do you configure this technology? You see, by getting really curious, we're gonna dig deeper. The metaphor I offer is this. I think we should fall in love with the technology. Think about it, when you were falling for someone, did you just memorize their phone number? No, you wanted to get to know them at a very deep level. Same thing here. I don't want you to just memorize the OSI model. I want you to get to know those layers at a very deep level. In other words, I want you to fall in love with the tech. You can get certified and add a big check. Just like Kevin show you how to fall in love with the tech. We're more likely to fall in love with the tech if we understand it at a deeper level. For example, let's consider fiber optics. We can illustrate fiber optics operation with a glass of water and a straw. As I put this straw in the glass of water, you might notice that the straw appears to bend as it goes into the water. The straw is not actually bending, however, the light is bending there's a different index of refraction in air as compared to water. Light travels at a different speed in water as compared to air. That's the basis of how fiber optics operate. We have a light source like a laser coming into the core. That's one type of glass in a fiber optic strand. And when that light source hits the cladding that surrounds the core, the index of refraction of the cladding, which is still glass, but the index of refraction of the cladding is so different than the core because it has a different number of impurities called dopants in it, it's gonna cause the light not just to bend a little bit, it's gonna bend back on itself. It's gonna bend back into the core and this light is gonna bounce back and forth, back and forth, back and forth through the core. This is how we can send light down a fiber optic cable, allowing that fiber optic cable to even turn corners. It doesn't have to be a straight line of sight. That's just one example of how networking technologies can be a little bit more interesting if we take the time to look under the hood.
The second mistake that so many Cisco certification candidates make is they don't have an effective study strategy. When it comes to studying, I suggest that we need a plan. We need to be able to look at our calendar and know exactly when we're going to be doing study. If you just decide, I'm going to study over the next month, that's not very specific and things might get put off to the weekend and then the weekend you're busy, life can get in the way. So I think we need to have a detailed schedule for our week, exactly when are we going to study. And in addition, addition to going through study materials, which are fantastic, I think we need to get our hands dirty. We need to get our hands on some Cisco iOS gear if we're, for example, studying for the CCNA. There are different ways that we could do that. Maybe using our employer's equipment if they allow us to do that, building a home lab, using an emulator or a simulator. And then as you approach test time, you need to go back and review any weak areas. After all, Cisco gives us a blueprint of what's on an exam. We should easily be able to identify areas in which we don't feel particularly strong. And I want to give you a lot more detail about these study strategies. I want to show you a sample schedule for how we might prepare for a CCNA exam. I want to show you what it's like to be in a simulator environment. I want to contrast emulators with simulators, take a look at the pros and cons of each, and talk about specific steps we can take to review our weak areas. And to do that, I don't want to try to cram it into this video. I want to give you a separate video just on study strategies. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you how to get immediate access to the next video in this series, which is all about study strategies. I don't know if you've ever taken a Cisco exam or not, but it can be really stressful. You've put in all these hours of study, you or your employer has shelled out a bunch of money. How do you calm your nerves so that you're going to be able to remember all of that stuff that you learned? Well, I learned my best tip for calming nerves by watching the Winter Olympics one year. Team USA had a short track speed skater named Apollo Ono, and I would watch him race, and it was amazing to watch the race, but I was noticing before every single race, he was getting ready and he was, <sighs> he was yawning. <laughs> that blew me away. I thought, you're in the Olympics. Are you bored? Why are you yawning? And then the announcer explained what was going on. The announcer explained that Apollo Ono yawned to calm his nerves. I'd never heard of that before, but you know what? I started to try it. When I went to take a Cisco exam, I would sit down in that room in front of that computer and before beginning the exam, <sighs> just take a nice, deep, relaxing yawn. It does something amazing internally in your brain to really calm your nerves down. And the further you get in your Cisco career, the more mental energy you're gonna be spending to reach that next level. So the mental stuff, it can be a really big deal. That's an overview of three common mistakes Cisco certification candidates make. Again, we had the techie stuff, trying to figure out exactly what questions are on the exam and not really falling in love with the technology. Number two was the strategy stuff, where we talked about scheduling time for your study, getting your hands dirty on Cisco iOS gear, be it through a simulator or emulator or real gear, and going back and reviewing any weak areas. And finally, there was the mental stuff. How do you overcome nervousness on the exam? And if you want to go deeper with me, I'd love for you to join me for another free video that goes into more detail about the strategy stuff. And this video covers my best study tips. You're going to get immediate access to the next video, and you're going to be notified about other free videos in this series that are going to be released over the coming days. Music